Hello viewers, welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Chandra Kala and the highlights of today's program are Workshop on India-Bangladesh Cross-Border Relations held in Agartala His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama addresses the Global Peace Convention in Nepal. Northeast students promote oneness and belongingness through sports. And seven horsepower challenge in Nagaland unveils the state's adventure tourism potentialities. In a bid to strengthen India-Bangladesh border relations and promote people-to-people -people relationship, a two-day workshop was organized under the ages of Department of Journalism and Mass Communication of Tripura University and OKD Institute of Social Change and Development, Guwahati, in collaboration with Sasakawa Peace Foundation of Japan. The India-Bangladesh Border Interaction and Cross-Border Relations with special reference to Northeast and Roads Ahead workshop was held to imbibe more students from Bangladesh in Tripura University and vice versa. We have a report. India and Bangladesh share a border of 4,096 km and the northeastern state of Tripura shares an expensive 856 km border with a neighbouring country. Tripura can also be termed as the potential gateway of trade and business within Bangladesh and India's northeast and the country as a whole. In context of this, a two-day long workshop on India-Bangladesh border, interaction and cross-border relations with special reference to northeast and roads ahead was recently held under the ages of Tripura University and OKD Institute of Social Change and Development, Guwahati in collaboration with Sasakawa Peace Foundation of Japan. The workshop aimed to promote people-to-people -people relation and exchange of ideas between the two nations. We are interested in uh, knowing the people or kind of spreading the knowledge of culture and friendship around. And I think this workshop is a step towards that. It is very important for Tripura University because Tripura University's nearest foreign country is Bangladesh and we are extremely interested in developing a stronger relationship with Bangladesh. It is worth mentioning that Tripura University already has few students of PhD from Bangladesh and is going for exchange of faculties and scholars with various universities of Bangladesh for bolstering the bond between the two nations and for better understanding of the same. Professors and students from the universities, including delegates from Japan, congregated in the workshop and discussed various issues pertaining to the multilateral Indo-Bangladesh relationship. Moreover, delegates from Japan stressed that peace forms an integral path for the nation's development in all spheres and people-to-people -people dialogue is an important tool to sustain the growth of the countries. People on the ground, you know, no matter what happened, the political, among us, the political areas, uh, really need to, as a grassroots organization, really need to commit the people-to-people -people dialogue, no matter what happened. Even we also have a program in China also to promote the exchange between China and Japan. Emphasis was also laid on transport communication and connectivity with special reference to Agartala Akhara rail link as India and Bangladesh bears much historical and political significance. Organizing such workshop at grassroots level will go a long way in imparting knowledge among the youths about the culture and the relation that is shared between the two countries. Well, after his second visit to Northeast, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama had recently been on his maiden visit to landlocked state of Manipur where he addressed the International Peace Conference. The conference brought under one platform a host of religious leaders from various countries. It was the first of its kind global peace conference in the state. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama had recently made his maiden visit to Manipur. During his three-day visit, Dalai Lama had addressed the International Peace Conference, which was held in the state capital, Imphal. The convention was aimed at promoting peace and harmony in the northeastern region. He was declared as a state guest by Chief Minister Nbirin Singh. I firmly believe today's world, we need 
sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. Uh, that is the basis of karuna, infinite karuna. And then second, uh, my commitment is that I am Buddhist monk. All major world tradition have same potential. All can serve humanity to bring inner peace. Use different method, different concept, but same sort of, of potential. Cross. Host of religious leaders from various countries, including Buddhist monks from Southeast Asia and Myanmar, congregated in the conference. Issues related to maintaining world peace and social fabric of the society as a whole were discussed during the conference. Solutions concerning human development and various aspects of crime and violence that exist in the societies world over were also discussed. The Tibetan spiritual leader enlightened the crowd by his speech on peace and harmony and gave a spiritual impression of human life. So I want to show you uh, Dalai Lama's face, smiling face. <laughs> so you, media people, wherever I go, I also telling media people, you also have the responsibility to promote sense of oneness of seven billion human beings and uh, promote sense of concern of well-being of entire human being. Addressing the situation that is prevailing in Manipur, the leader urged the gathering to strive for inner peace and harmony among all and asserted that all human beings, irrespective of caste and creed, are equal. He stressed on the need and importance to respect all religions and that people should strive for universal harmony. While sports bring people together, irrespective of their caste, race, creed or religion, to celebrate their sense of togetherness and peaceful coexistence through sports, residents of Northeast students living in Delhi and Mumbai had recently organized the respective annual sports meet. Let's have a look. Each year, students from the Northeastern region residing in the metro cities organize various events and activities in a way to promote the region's culture and remain connected to their ancestral roots bringing the community and a single platform and celebrates its vibrant life, Dunkul Gatamnaud Long Delhi and a back student union of the Dunkul community from the land of Manipur organized an annual sports meet in New Delhi. During the five-day long event, sports enthusiasts and fans from the region had routinely drawn the DDA sports complex in Vasan Kunj and rooted for the preferred teams and individuals. Celebrating under the team, Bing Maya Ling Maya Imayu, Maur Zobai Itumi Otnarud, which says, let the vibrant community take forward the fame laid down by the ancestors and utilize the potentials and its capabilities for good cause. The tournament witnessed 16 teams vying for the prestigious title. Since we are away from home and since we we don't have any other platform for us to be together. Tangkul Kitamna Long Delhi organized such a function so that everyone can come together and uh, compete with one another so that we can promote the youngsters, we can promote the talented youngsters and we take such an initiative, such a necessary uh, action so that they can be uplifted or they can be uh, lifted up into a higher level of uh, competition. The meet showcased the region's craze for sports through various sports activities like football, volleyball, tug of war, high gym and so on. It is also worth mentioning that the tournament provides platform to identify and select the potential soccer players for the upcoming Tamchon football tournament, one of the prestigious soccer tournaments from the region in New Delhi. We didn't know that so many people are here in Delhi like who can play and have so much talent but now that we are playing as teams and we are uh, introducing our own own talent so yeah I think that this this kind of events should be uh, incorporated more often yeah. Going in a similar note the 7 Naga Student Union Mumbai annual sports meet was held in Mumbai Sports Authority of India Kantivali. Huge number of people from the community turns up and gives moral support to the players, building a sense of brotherhood and unity amongst the congregation. Altogether, seven teams participated in the meet and gave the pass. Mumbai has always 
been pro providing such a good platform for all of us. We are proud to see so many grounds available whenever we want to play football. And, and then I think the level of uh, the facilities that we are getting in Mumbai, I think if we are to channelize properly, I think future sports, sports stars will come from this, uh, will emerge from Mumbai itself. Such platforms give a rare opportunity for those people staying far away from home to come together and build closer ties. At the same time, the budding sports talents from the region can showcase its skills and potentials through such platform. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj recently made a visit to Dhaka to attend the annual meeting of the India-Bangladesh Joint Consultative Commission. She met with her Bangladeshi counterpart Abdul Hassan Mahmood Ali and reviewed the bilateral ties. Both leaders discussed ways to curb the menace of terrorism and extremism in the region. During her two-day visit, 15 Indian assisted developmental projects worth about $8.7 million in the areas of education, health, culture and community development were inaugurated. India shares over 4,000 km long water with Bangladesh and peace and development at the border remains prime concern of both nations. For the first time, Centre Interlocutor R. N. Ravi holds political talks with the Working Committee of the 6th Naga National Political Groups inside Nagaland. During his visit, he was given grand reception by the stakeholders in Dimapur city and welcomed the historic development in the ongoing peace process. The interlocutor also lauded the Naga civil societies and the tribal organizations for bringing in the six NNPGs formally for an inclusive Naga peace talks with the Government of India for solving the long Naga issues. He also said that there was only one peace process which would be inclusive and there would be only one agreement. In a major thrust to bring development in the health sector of the state, the first ever critical care ambulance service under the initiative of the Beit Shalom Welfare Society was inaugurated in Dimapur. Beit Shalom is the CSR action group of REM group in the state. The ambulance is equipped with auto-loading stretcher, scoop stretcher, spine board, head immobilizer, D-type oxygen cylinder and a biphasic defibrillator relief 900. Along with this, the group has also launched a Bolero ambulance which will be operational in all the districts. The ambulances were launched by Consultant Department of Medicine, Eden Medical Center, Dr. B. Longkumer. Joining with the rest of the nation, recently the state of Tripura observed the second National Ayurveda Day, marking to popularize in developing the Ayurveda medical care facilities and accelerated the system for better health care facilities. Organized by the State Health and Family Welfare Department under the theme Pain Management through Ayurveda, the event was graced by the State Minister of Information and Cultural Affairs, Banulal Saha at Agartala Pragna Bhavan. Speaking at the event, the minister said that bringing synergy between the traditional wisdom of Ayurveda and modern diagnostic tools and technology will enhance the healthcare sector. In commemoration to the martyrs of the border security forces who have made supreme sacrifices of their lives for the service of the country, the 49th Battalion and 54th Battalion of BSF, Manipur organized the second edition of Run for Martyrs Half Marathon in Imphal recently. The 10 km run was kicked off from the Khuman Lampak Sports Complex and touches through North AOC along the National Highway 2 and finishes the point at the BSF campus Koi Rengai, Imphal. Around 400 participants between the age group of 12 to 16 years from the state dared the drizzling rain and run for the cause. Well, moving on, India's northeast is considered as a tourism hub of the country as the region is blessed with abundant natural resources and its scenic beauty is a sight to behold. The region as a whole has already carved out a space in the tourism map of the country. In recent years, the rising trend of adventure sports tourism has added another feather to the cap of the tourism sector. In a major boost to tourism and adventure sports in the landlocked state of Nagaland, the Nagaland Adventure Club had recently organized a three-day long seven-horsepower challenge in the state. 
Adventure sports lovers and racers from across the country were seen rushing in large numbers as they geared up to compete in the most thrilling sports of horsepower challenge. The three-day long challenge has been organized under the aegis of Nagaland Adventure Club with an aim to open more avenues for youngsters and promote the adventure sports tourism of the state and the region as a whole. As many as 135 participants from various parts of the country, including the states of North East, took part in the competition. The scope for the upcoming riders and drivers here in Nagaland is very, very thin. I just because of the uh, sponsors, which we are, you know, which we don't get usually, uh, because there is no company as such that we are they have uh, here in Nagaland. And for uh, I should say the track, or I, I mean like a, a permanent track is required for uh, riders and drivers of uh, Nagaland. And as such, a Nagaland Adventure Club has approached uh, the government of Nagaland two years back. And it's still in the process, but uh, we have gone for a survey there in Kohima. So I hopefully feel and urge the government to please do something and, you know, uh, to have a proper track for the writers and drivers of Nagaland. The racing field was overcrowded with adventure lovers cheering the participants who showcased a great thrill in riding and giving a tough competition to each other. It is worth mentioning that for the first time ever, a total of five female drivers took part in the event competing equally with their male counterparts. This is my first time trying for the two wheels and it's been only one and a half, say nearly two years for me since I started riding and then I thought of competing with my same category female riders but unfortunately since there is no one from our Nordist and also from Nagaland, just me and they're my friend from Assam. So we were told to compete with the boys. Of course, it was a tough competition, though I really enjoyed it a lot. It was overall a thrilling experience for the participants who got to experience autocross event of this magnitude in Nagaland, where there's no proper and permanent racing track. Such an event would gel with the efforts of the people of the state who are already making efforts to revive the racing culture as well as boost the tourism sector of the state. The winners of different categories belonging from different states such as Assam, Nagaland, Mizoram, Kerala were conferred with prize money and a trophy. Organizing such event will encourage and motivate more youngsters to take up such sport and produce and nurture more racers from the region to take part in national and international championships. Each year, youth from Northeast come to Delhi to give wings to their dreams as the national capital is a powerhouse of opportunities. Among the many vibrant communities from the region present in Delhi, Komrem community from Manipur recently celebrated the Silver Jubilee of its student union. Also, the Tripura Student Forum, Delhi, warmly accorded the freshers in their midst. For decades, Delhi has been one of the most sought-out places to live in, as the city provides the pathway to crowd and houses the prestigious knowledge centers. Joining with the rest of the nation, Nordic Indians also come to the national capital and avail the best facilities and opportunities in Delhi. Commemorating the completion of 25 years in Delhi, Comran community, one of the smallest and oldest indigenous tribes of Manipur, celebrated its silver jubilee with student community and hosts of dignitaries. Organized by the Comran Student Union Tally under the team Surf Your People, the historic event was created by the Assam's parliamentarian Ripun Pora, along with Olympic Indian boxer MC Maricom, who herself belongs to the Comran community. From being such a small community, they have produced the world talent like Mericom. Hmm? World talent like Mericom. So it is a, a matter of very great uh, proud, not only for the people of Manipur or not only for the um, Kamrem community, it is for the whole of our country. This student organization has played very vital role for social transformation in Manipur, more particularly among the Kamrem community. 
Meanwhile, students from the Tripura province rolled out the red carpet and warmly accorded their freshers in their community in New Delhi. Organized by the Tripura Student Forum Tally, the 15 Freshest Meet event brought the young, vibrant community together and made everyone feel at home. Speaking at the event as Chief Case, Union Minister Kirin Rajiju encouraged the students to put on more efforts to achieve their goals and dreams in life. He also appealed the student community to have mental toughness in order to stand firm and focus even during hard times in life. If you manage to get good education with value, with lots of um, extra knowledge and experiences, I think your purpose is served. But if you stay here for some time, some years, and you go back without really acquiring a certain degree, then your purpose of coming here will not be served. It doesn't mean everybody will be absorbed in government jobs or some kind of uh, uh, private jobs. You can be your own master of destiny. Freshers were seen equally excited as they witnessed the warm reception accorded to them by the seniors. Moreover, such event gives moral support to the freshmen as they partake the journey to attain higher knowledge in life. I'm very happy to be uh, a part of Delhi University. It's, it was my dream to be, the, to be studying in Delhi University, so as I've got this, I will try my level best to study well and I will, and I will try to establish myself and I will make, uh, and I'll make others too, to learn from me something, I'll, I'll make my state proud of. Achieving greater heights in life through better education will not only benefit oneself, but hugely contributes to the society. And such even gives reassuring to the people from the region to strive and stay focused in life. Indigenous handloom has been associated in the history of Manipur since the ancestral time and the province reach handloom product received global attention. To bring forward the local weavers and promote the traditional handloom in the global market, the first of its kind Sinai Lechal fashion parade was created in Imphal. Let's have a look. In Manipur, handloom industry carries an important role in economic growth and uplifts the livelihood of the people since the early stage. It is indeed worth to glorify the presence of rich and unique raw materials of handloom and textiles in the region, which gave wings to many budding entrepreneurs, designers and indigenous weavers in the recent time. In a bid to open gateway to global market and promote the less traditional Wangkai Pi and Moirang Pi, two of the indigenous clothes of Manipur with red quality, Wangkai Pi Mantri's Handloom initiated the Sinai Lechal Fashion Parade with the theme Be Handloom, Save Weavers in Imphal. The parade also aimed to create space for the indigenous weavers and showcase their hand weaving exquisite designs so as to outsource to the global market. Today's uh, event Sinalachal here, I'd like to promote our rich culture, tradition, handloom products. And here, uh, uh, nearly, I just I want to uh, showcase around 150 different designs. The first of its kind fashion show gave a glimpse of various traditional handloom products with unique motives and designs. Of varied hues and shades associated with mostly in silk materials gave the rare and richness looks of the Wangkai Pi and Morang Pi handloom products. Paired with Manipuri Fanik, the handwoman embroidered stoles in different mixture of shades told the show. Meanwhile, as a sign of recognition and encouragement, some of the indigenous weavers were also felicitated at the event. It was a great event. It was eye pleasing, and uh, all the dresses are like uh, like uh, very uh, more to tradition, uh, Manipur tradition, and it looks very comfortable and wearable, and everyone can uh, like buy that dress. The show also highlighted the other traditional handlooms of the state and sent a message to the people to preserve and promote the richly indigenous handloom products of the state. This is a very unique kind of a, a fashion parade, especially because this fashion parade has aimed to promote the 
traditional attires of Manipuri. Uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, you know uh, collections which we have never seen in my life as well. So this will give a very uh, nice and very good platform to all the weavers, to the models, to the designers. Such handloom promotional show gives awareness in preserving and conserving the pure handloom products. It also encourages the budding designers to adopt the original method and enhance to increase the productivity of the handloom products. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us to our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ANI. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Chandra Kala. Goodbye and take care.